just received these guys. Hi viewers, welcome to a special episode of the van build. It's going to be a technical episode about batteries, so maybe it's not for everyone. But nevertheless, I wanted to share this with you. Currently, we use a 60 amp hour LiPo 4 battery in the van that I already had from previous camping trips. Two weeks ago, I finally received my new LiPo 4 cells from BLS battery. With these, I'm able to build my own 280 amp hour battery, which will yield about 3.5 kilowatt hours. Uh, for your reference, a household of two persons in Belgium consumes about 6.4 kilowatt hours per day. But of course, that includes a dishwasher, a furnace, a washing machine, a TV, a dryer, and so on. I estimated one kilowatt hour of electricity needs in our van per day, including running a hot water boiler every day. This will give us a bit more than three days of off-grid living in bad weather conditions, without solar power in worst case scenarios. Of course, we can always run the engine to charge the battery. LifePo 4 batteries are far better than classic old school lead acid batteries in terms of life, capacity, size, and especially weight. I wouldn't recommend anybody on using lead acid today, except when the price really matters and you cannot afford a LifePo 4 battery. But in the long run, LifePo 4 battery will be cheaper due to its longer lifetime. Now, you can also just buy a finished LiPo 4 battery with BMS with all whistles and bells uh, of 280 amp hours capacity, but that would cost around 2,500 euros, depending on the brand you pick. However, I was always interested in this uh, technology, so I wanted to build my own uh, battery. I ordered some cells and a BMS, both from Chinese suppliers who had a good review. And this gave me a total cost of 800 euros. This being said, and with all components in house, I still need to assemble the battery, charge the cells, put them in series, and do a capacity test. As you will see, this is easier said than done for this first time battery builder. Now enjoy watching my mistakes. I put the batteries in series, we have 13 volts now. Next step is to connect the BMS. And these are the BMS instructions. As you can see, not so hard. We just have to make sure to connect a wire between each uh, cell. So the BMS can balance the separate cells. Then we can download the app. It should work by then. Let's uh, find out. I left my good insulation strippers at home but this will work just fine the wires are really really thin so I'm gonna add a little bit of uh, solder to make sure they uh, stay the way they are
So according to the sheet, I need to activate it by charging. So I'm going to connect the uh, BMS uh, wires uh, together and then uh, put it in uh, put it in the van and connect it to the solar charger and uh, see if it works. The minus to the minus, plus to plus. I'll flick the switch and see what happens. So connected the charger. Enable the solar panels. Now I'm waiting for stuff to happen rapidly. Now it's weird. Maybe the BMS is still calibrating or something. Okay, I'm gonna download the app. Let's see if I can connect and see if something has gone wrong. That's definitely not happy. All right, it seems to work now. Um, I forgot one thing at least, um, I blame the Chinglish translation, um, but uh, when charging you need to use your multimeter, put it into uh, resistance mode or diode mode and then uh, basically short P- minus and B-. Minus. Um, so I did it before but I was not charging at that point, so you need to start charging and then that's basically shorting out the two uh, negative uh, negative uh, wires and start charging at a whopping 11 amps it's nice weather outside so okay looks good uh, next thing is uh, try and connect to the dongle it's been a day and uh, as you can see the battery is fully charged 14.5 uh, volts okay small correction um, I just checked the app of the BMS and according to the app it's minus zero degrees Celsius so the temperature protection kicked in that's why the solar charger sees 14.5 volts and it's definitely not minus one degree Celsius uh, so I think the yeah the, the temperature sensor is, is off a little bit okay so I'm doing a capacity test I put a power meter between the inverter and the battery and the beeping you hear is the um, inverter giving an alarm because uh, voltage is dropping below 11 volts but uh, according to the PMS everything is fine I'm using this uh, on, on half power so uh, 750 watts 800 watts uh, goes into the inverter so that's a, that's a bit of a loss also the fan is running so I was just sorting out uh, some things here and uh, the battery already shut off at uh, 70 or 80 amp hours consumed so that's quite uh, quite soon one of the cells dropped below 2.2 volt that's probably why it shut off uh, so I think I'm gonna take it home anyway to sort it out and charge it under under good uh, circumstances so we're back home and I brought the battery with me since uh, we got some strange results today from the capacity tests and some imbalances between the cells. I've checked all connections and tightened them down a bit and uh, now I'm charging them using my homemade power supply. So it's the next day and we're still charging the battery. I just realized I had um, another power supply um, it doesn't come with uh, constant current mode but uh, we are now putting 26 amps into the battery so I reckon it will be fully charged uh, this evening until now everything is going great battery stays in balance so we're gonna do the capacity test probably tonight so we're ready to do the capacity test all batteries are almost charged to 3.65 volts as you can see we have 13.9 volts at the terminals so the battery is quite full so I'm using a hair dryer to test it it's now drawing 60 amps when I put it on full power it's uh, around 1500 watts which even exceeds the maximum rating of the inverter uh, to be on the safe side, I will keep it at half power, so... Ok, 
Nikki, so the hair dryer was a bit too annoying. Also, Nikki got a bit scared about the breaking hair dryer. So I took this little cooker, electrical cooker, and it consumes exactly 1000 watt. Although more than 1200 watts is going in, so either it's consuming more than a thousand watts or we have some loss in the inverter which could be at the maximum ratings it's also the maximum rating of the BMS okay I stopped this because the casing of the amp meter is melting so I'm gonna find something else that consumes a bit of electricity but not so much so, dear viewers, this is what happens uh, when your cable's too thin. Although I'm not kidding, it says 150 amps. But it got so hot that the soldering just melted. Uh, you get this. I'm gonna see and try and fix it. And when it's fixed, I hope I can fix it. Then I will try and test with a more moderate load, like just uh, connect some. Uh, some computer equipment. Still doing capacity test, running my computers, laptops, some lights, so the fan isn't running all the time because it's a small apartment here and having the noise around is not so nice. So we are approaching 1300 watt hours and I calculated um, that I'm still expecting 1375 kilowatt hours so capacity still 19 percent according to the app so it seems that the capacity will be all right um, i'm gonna do another capacity test later on back in the van we're almost at the end of our test you can hear the inverter now beeping and the battery is as good as empty so the first capacity test is uh, finished and I had to do some calculations because uh, of the different phases of uh, discharging. First I used the amp meter that uh, failed after a while and then uh, I used this um, watt meter for a 220 volt socket and uh, I am estimating that a total of 240 amp hours came out before the BMS kicked in and shut off the battery so if you take 80% so normally lithium lithium batteries can um, be depleted by 80% so if you go lower you can go lower but it's not good for the cells um, I was estimating for a usable capacity of 224 amp hours and by my calculations 240 amp hours came out um, which seems a bit on the high side but it's definitely definitely good uh, definitely in the range that I expected and uh, when the battery goes back into the van I will do another capacity test I want to point out again if you're doing this yourself make sure you use the uh, right wire gauge um, I'm using uh, 10 square millimeters wiring for the high current um, appliances so can go to 100 amps the inverter can pull 100 amps maximum and even now when I'm charging this at 30 amps the red wire so the plus positive wire uh, really yeah gets warm so make sure you use the right wire sizes and make sure you have good um, good fuses rated for what you want to do as you all have already seen, I'm using this quite popular amp meter. You can see it a lot over YouTube. Um, and you can also see that the wires are yeah, quite a bit smaller than my 10 square millimeter uh, wires. And yeah, we've seen here you can see the melted part. Take care when you're doing this. And uh, I won't recommend using this meter to do some high current testing for a longer period of time. I have uh, ordered another meter that works with the Hall effect sensor so it doesn't come into contact directly 
in your circuit and it should be a lot safer to use. So next thing I want to do is print some um, covers for these bus bars. Um, I'm thinking about designing little covers, three of them, to cover the bus bars and then the PMS can go on top and it will look nicer than just wrap everything with tape. So this is the design I made. It's a little uh, cap to put over the bus bars. And, uh, I made it round so it's 3D printable and uh, I'm gonna try and print it now. Let's see uh, how it goes. Print is coming along. First one is always a bit of trial and error. There's a bit of warping at the front so uh, probably need to adjust the bed a little bit. So this is the first uh, cover that I printed uh, and apart from the warping it uh, it fits. I think it looks, uh, looks cool. At least it's better than uh, covering it all with tape. So last print is ready. Also not the prettiest but at least it stick to the build plate. Balancing the cells once again. The charging went fairly good. Um, but I really want them all to be at 3.65 volts and you can see I put them all in parallel and I kind of hacked the, this part because I don't have enough bus bars so it's not recommended but I'm only charging at 2 amps so uh, this shouldn't be a problem so I'm gonna leave this at 3.65 max it's on current uh, constant current mode that's why it's showing a bit less I'm gonna leave this like that for a couple of hours and uh, make sure the cells are balanced. So this is the latest status of the battery. As you can see the caps are on right now. And I reattached uh, the BMS a little bit better. Okay, it's still with duct tape, I know. I've uh, again tested the capacity and if my calculations are correct and I uh, mean taking in account that the inverter is about 93% effective I get a little more as 280 amp hours out of the battery um, I think it was 280 2, 3, 4, something like that so this means that the mentioned capacity of 280 amp hours is actually usable capacity I was, uh, I was thinking that only 224 amp hours would be usable since that's 80% of 280 but the 280 is actually 80% of the capacity you can go much lower um, but it would damage the battery so then the BMS kicks in really happy with the batteries anyway so this concludes this episode before doing this I watched a lot of YouTube videos about this topic nevertheless I've made a lot of rookie mistakes I think the main takeaways from this episode are first do a build charge with the battery assembled and the BMS in place so at 12 volts Second, put the cells back in parallel and charge them equally for their so to 3.65 volts. Only then do the capacity test. As I have experienced, this is really the only way to properly charge, initially charge the cells to the same capacity and have them balanced. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed this technical episode. There's more to come and uh, catch you guys later.